Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to PKK Radio. This is Transform Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Luna Deso. Tonight, I'm joined by DJ Katie Otro, and she's a DJ from New York. She's also living between Berlin and Los Angeles most of her time and spends a lot of summers in the dance music mecca, Habiza, spinning there at legendary venues. She had her first release on house legend Todd Perry's in-house records, and She's going to be joining us in just a minute. We're going to have a short set from Katie Ocho tonight, so you can enjoy some of her music now while we wait. And when we return, I'll be joined by Katie Ocho, and we'll talk about how she's giving back to the Music Cares Foundation. Thank you. 
Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Luna. Thank you for asking me. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good. You know, I'm just um, picking out tracks for the mix. I'm super excited about that. So, yeah, mm-hmm. just getting some tracks from new stuff from Mobley, which is one of my favorite labels. Um, a few of my own personal productions. And, yeah, we'll see what else ends up in the mix. Fantastic. I'm so excited to hear it. And I was just explaining to our guest that um, you're usually back and forth between Los Angeles and Berlin, and you spend a lot of time in Ibiza in the summer. How is all of the traveling going with this whole lockdown? Like, do you see an impact on your music, either good or bad? Well, right now, I think the important thing to do is to adapt to what's going on in the world. And that's, like, kind of always how I live my life. So, you know, personally, professionally, spiritually, whatever it is, you just have to adapt um, and innovate. So, basically, right now, you'll see, like, a lot of people doing, like, live streaming from their studios or their homes. There's going to be a lot of music production I mean, I feel like now more than ever is a good time for people to pause and to produce music and to create. I mean, you know, sometimes I would joke that there's no time for music, but now there is. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love that. Yeah, there's so much time, and I really love the technology that we have to be able to do these live streamings. Are you planning anything like that, or you're just going to be working on a lot of music? So right now I'm working on a collaboration with a friend of mine here in um, Los Angeles, actually, because I'm in L.A. right now, which I'm super excited about because with all of this stuff going on, it's nice to be um, 
close to family, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, although I've been talking to a lot of my friends in Germany, and, um, you know, it's interesting because with all the technology we have, you can collaborate with anybody anywhere at any time. But right yeah. now I'm working on a mix with my friend Sarah Zoya. She's a DJ here um, in Los Angeles. And, um, yeah, she just um, has a lot of the same kind of style that I have in terms of our taste in music. So we decided to make a mix and we started on it before, you know, a few weeks ago we started throwing um, around tracks and then, you know, of course this happened and uh, we're still working on it. So we we were working in person and now um, depending on, you know, how things go in the next week or so, but we're working just remotely. But I mean, it's great because I mean, even, even Ableton projects, you can take Ableton, you can save it, send it to somebody else with Ableton and they can open it up and see exactly what you're working on. And you guys can go back and forth and, um, you know, send it back and forth. So it's just the technology is, it's awesome. I mean, it's like being in the same room almost. <laughs> you could even yeah. live stream while you're working if you wanted to or FaceTime with I the person. I was just imagining that. Like, that'd be so great. It's basically like being in the room together. Um, what do you think the learning curve is for that kind of technology? Because it sounds so easy. You're like, oh, I'm just going to send Ableton to Sarah, and then she's going to send Ableton to me, and we can see it. But um, how long did it take you to learn a, a system like that? Well, you know, for me, I definitely have taken classes um, throughout my career. So. I, when I first started DJing in New York City, I took an electronic music production class. Well, first I took a Pro Tools class because I wanted to learn music production, and everybody mm-hmm. said that Pro Tools was um, Pro Tools was industry standard. So yeah. I took a class in Pro Tools and realized that this is great for recording um, instruments and, you know, Mm -hmm. vocals and things like that. But it wasn't necessarily the best tool for electronic music. Right. So, yeah. So, um, I – and the reason why I was able to realize and recognize that is because I would spend a lot of time with DJs in their studios. I was, I was always asking like, Hey, um, you know, you're working on track or can I come by your studio? Can I, you know, be amused? Can I come get your coffee? Can I bring coffee? Like whatever (laughs) it was, I wanted, you know, I wanted to, I was like a sponge because I quickly realized that, you know, like a lot of many things in life, you're not going to necessarily learn what it is that you need to know in a classroom. Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I did. I mean, like, when I started getting into DJing, I took a class at, um, are you familiar with the Scratch Academy? Yeah. So I took a class there back in New York City, and um, after I started DJing a bit on my own, and um, basically they were instrumental in giving me a lot of the uh, tools you know, you come in on the four and you, you, you wait till the, you know, the turnaround on the 16 and you, or the one, you come in on the one and you, you know, wait for the turnaround on the 16. But basically um, the most I ever learned was just watching other DJs work and being in their studios and asking them, you know, to come and um, basically just, you know, be a fly on the wall and see what they do. So, I got to uh, see how a lot of amazing DJs do what they do and the, asking the community, you know. I'm not really like a forum person. I mean, I definitely, you know, have gone on, mm. in, you know, Native Instruments, Native Instruments forum when I needed to ask a question about Logic, um, Ableton, things like that. But, like, you know, one of my really good friends, DJ Red, he is an Ableton certified instructor in, the, in uh, Mexico. He's, like, one of the only 
three or something like that in the whole country. So, you know, I, I met him at the BPM Festival, and we became really good friends, and we've been making music together. Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, basically ask um, if I can learn from other people, and then eventually I was able to do it on my own. I mean, and this is definitely, I feel like, before the explosion of, um, you know, like, the, the, what is it, Dub Lab, the schools that um, mm-hmm. teach music production. Which ones are they called again? Oh, like the like the Music Academy? What is that? MI, MI, no, not MIT. <laughs> music, um, MI. And that's like the really big one in Los Angeles, I know. But I did want to mention like the Scratch DJ Academy that you had brought up um, would be a great resource for anybody who's listening who does want to get into uh, the DJ world. It was um, started, I think, by Jam Master J, and they've taught, I want to say, like maybe a million people <laughs> and uh, producers worldwide. So um, I just want to leave that as a resource for people to look up. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. Like, they're great. So there's, like, Dub Lab, Scratch Academy, and there's some mm-hmm. other um, schools that specifically – I feel like Scratch Academy, they're a little – you know, um, they have a broad uh, range of genres, but, like, Dub Lab, they, they pretty much – I'm pretty sure focus on just electronic music. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, just – I mean, it was, it's just been a long road, but of um, learning from other people and also um, – taking classes and just being a sponge, you know, and figuring out, like, what works best. And for me, I saw that um, a lot of my friends were working in um, Ableton, Logic, Mm -hmm. Cubase, Fruity Loops. And for me, Ableton was just the one that resonated. So I ended up diving more into that. And I've, I've, I've worked with so many different producers and DJs and collaborated with them from, you know, Australia to um, Mexico to England and, of course, New York, L.A., Houston. That's like, <laughs> I feel like it's really important. Like, I'm so inspired to hear how much you really worked for this because I feel like a lot of people maybe – coming up in music in the recent years are kind of like expecting things to happen really fast for them or really naturally. And if it doesn't, they're just kind of disheartened. You know, I don't, I don't see a lot of people hungry for the education around it. And so I don't think that we teach people enough that that's what it takes. It's like, Ooh, American Idol overnight, you're a sensation, but it really takes a lot of work and study just like any other career and so I think that that's a really important message to be giving to people because they don't always see it in the mainstream absolutely and I mean I feel like a lot of people who are singers for instance you know they didn't just start singing you know whenever they were in their 20s they had been singing in churches or choirs at school since they were little kids you know so you don't see the Uh you know 20 15 20 years 25 years you know before they get a chance to really shine or people who play instruments you know my um, I have a DJ violin project called Cat and Cato and some of the tracks on my mix will actually include um, a few of our songs that we've created so yeah so Cat and Cato Brittany Cotto, she is a string player, and she's been playing violin, I think, since she was four years old. So, um, oh. you know, it takes a long time um, to really learn this stuff, but also, you know, just dedication to it. Uh, it, it. If you ask a fashion designer, you know, they probably started out making their patterns, and then it, it didn't come out so good, so they had to make it again. And, I mean, it just it really does. You have to really focus on your craft and it takes a minute so I mean you know some people are able to just DJ but I feel like a true DJ is a producer and a DJ Uh, although I mean they just go hand in hand you know although I'm not gonna hate on anyone but for me like you know like a designer who's really a designer they know how to make the garment you know from the pattern to to sketch to the pattern to the actual sewing I mean you know all the steps even if they don't always do all the steps like for instance Mm -hmm. I'm not a great master mixing master 
you know, I, I don't, I'm not, that's not my forte, but I can produce a track. So I feel like even if, you know, you create, if you sketch out a dress and, you know, have someone help you make the pattern, you know, at least like you created that, you know, all the steps you, you've tried it. I've tried mixing and mastering and I'm just shitty at it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not an expert mix master, but like I definitely know all the steps. Like I know I've been in the rooms, like I know what it is. And, and that's really important whenever you are in any craft, but especially I feel like in, you know, DJing music production, it's good to like know the back, all the back end, all the steps. I'm so glad that you said like in any craft, because I was just thinking like as somebody who is freelanced in multiple areas of the music industry, and I'm sure it like goes into again, anything outside of music, uh, it always stands out to me when somebody has definitely done the work at every step. And I think it's like, critical to their success. You can just tell when somebody is running a company but hasn't like started on the ground level. And I think that when they have the experience at every step, it also just creates community around those like people who are doing the other steps for them now, if that makes sense. Like for me, when I know that my boss is like started out, you know, lower and done all these steps, it's just like, oh, wow, like, now I can get there too. And now there's kind of a different relationship there, I think. Um, Definitely. And also you just have more respect for that person in terms yeah. of that you know that they know what goes into it. You know, there's a lot of times where people will be able to do something very quickly, like say a coder, you know, you're like, Oh, something's broken on my website or something. Um, I don't know what, what's going on with there. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> let me look and they fix it and they just, you know, type in something. And the reason why the reason they are able to do that so quickly is not necessarily, um, not necessarily that it's easy, but that they have so much experience behind it that they're able to do it quickly. And that's like, I feel like any craft. Totally. Um, well, you mentioned dedication earlier, and I know that you're dedicated to giving back through Music Cares, and um, that's something that, is it a percentage of everything that you do or a specific thing that you work on? Tell me a little bit about how you connected with them. So Music Cares, uh, they are the Grammys Charitable Foundation, and what they do is they help musicians and anybody in music, I mean, from roadies to guitar techs to um, DJs to, you know, <laughs> singers, I, I mean, any, you know, mixing, mastering, engineers, producers, like anything to do with the music industry, they help them whenever um, they need that extra support. So, you know, it could be from whenever I, I bought a house originally I'm from Houston, Texas, and then I moved to New York City when I was 19, and then I moved to Los Angeles, and then I moved to Europe, and then I, I back to Los Angeles, back to Europe. So just basically, um, Houston's like my home, and I had bought a house there, and I lost the house in the Hurricane Harvey disaster, oh. and Music Care showed up. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Everything turned out just to be better than I could have expected, thank God. But Music Cares, they were there initially, and they sent me some money to help float me through because obviously, you know, I wasn't working or anything um, during that time. And, um, yeah, they've just they've been a great support. They've helped many of my friends, like, go to rehab, to get sober. They've helped people I know. I remember I was um, there was one time when I was in Europe, and some, like, crazy things had happened, and, you know, I had, like, gotten a bunch of money, like, stolen, and, you know, they helped me to come back here to, like, get some things in order, and then they've just been such a support. And so any time that I DJ an event where they're going to give a percentage of the um, earnings to a charity and they let me pick it, I always pick Music Cares. And so uh, the last one I did was in Venice, actually, it was this um, kind of like basement, kind of like downstairs. They don't have any basements in Venice, but it was like a downstairs party. I don't remember what the name of the venue was, but it was um, thrown by Dur Dursu from um, Peace and Noise. And Dursu, he, um, you know, is a, he's the vice 
Magazine Senior Design Director and Creative. Um, he's a DJ and he throws parties. And so he does this party and at the party they let me, you know, choose the charity. So that was the last one. But any party is like any time anyone's like, hey, you know, pick a charity, they are my go-to. And I just, um, I've done, you know, other kind of volunteer work for them. And anytime they need anything, I just show up for them because they've always shown up for me and so many other people that I know. Oh, I love that so much. Like a lot of times I feel like people are donating to a charity because, you know, oh, it sounds good, but they've actually really been there for you. And to hear that you've done other things like volunteer and things like that, that's just so inspiring and so important. And I was also like kind of my knowledge of Music Cares was through like rehab, a lot of things that I heard were, you know, medical expenses and um, personal yep. emergencies. And um, I, was, I was thinking that like some people might not realize how important that is in the music industry because you don't always have health insurance, you know, or um, you're only able to make money kind of, you know, like this crisis where you're only making money if you can work. So if you're not able to work, especially medical, personal emergencies, something like this, <laughs> where there's a lockdown, then there's a lack of funds and uh, a lack of being able to survive. And these people are really there to support the music industry that I think also, I didn't really realize the the weight of how important that was until I sat and thought about it. And I was like, music is really what's helping a lot of people, I think, right now when they're cooped up at home by themselves in quarantine or, you know, all of the things, the ups and downs that they go through in life. Like, music is really something that unites and heals and we can't do that without the people who make it. So, music care is being Absolutely. able to them is incredible 100 percent. and i mean also just um back to your point of music being able to like bring us together and to soothe us during you know crisis and times that are difficult like this it's it's something that you can't put a price tag on yet it is so valuable because i mean just imagine if you know we're all home and we're all like isolated and i'm just curious like in the next two weeks I would love for people to keep a diary of, you know, how many times they turned on music and like, you know, danced in their living room or cleaned their kitchen or, you know, whatever it is. I mean, I mean, so many people, I mean, when I get ready, I, I, I listen to music in the morning to get going. I listen to music. I mean, music is such an integral part of all of our lives. And now that we have like pause and we are forced to go within I'm curious to see, like, you know, how I mean, we're seeing some of it on social media, definitely with Tiga as a DJ, and he um, started this kind of challenge where he's dancing in his studio. <laughs> it's brilliant. You have to check it out. But um, I'm just curious. I mean, it's like if we didn't have music, it would be like another level of insanity. And oh, I just, I'm just sure. so, so grateful. I'm so grateful for that community and all the communities that are popping up around, you know, and coming together during this time because this is historic. You know, this is, I mean, I, I was in New York whenever they, when 9-11 happened, I was in New York for the blackout, but this is like worldwide and it's absolutely mind blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, my friends in Italy, you know, the bloody beat roots, they're Italian DJs. I mean, he wrote a really yeah. long post on Instagram with the realness that's going over there, on over there, you know, DJ Steve Waller, he's been tested positive for Corona. And I mean, just because you get it doesn't mean you're going to die. You know, it has yeah. nothing to do with that, but it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's like, it's just a matter of connecting like the dots of like, wow, we are all super connected and we are all mm -hmm. here together. So let's use music and other things. Um, like I found this group of women called Society, and they meet online, which is amazing, with Dr. Erin. She's just a new thought leader. She's just such an amazing woman. So for me, like, definitely the music community and women. Like, those are the two communities right now that are really helping 
um, make it through this and hopefully, you know, other people also will really go within and, you know, just find support groups, um, people online, people they can talk to, and, you know, of course, listen to music because, I mean, for me, music is number one. That's the number one thing that really helps me to just bring it back into the moment and to bring it back in the minute and just say, hey, I'm okay. You know, I'm listening to the song, I'm making the song. Like, it's me. The music, it's, I remember I had a, a, a period of time where I was DJing um, and touring, like, nonstop, and I was really lonely. I was really, really, like, I was hitting, like, an emotional bottom. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking to myself, like, hey, I don't have to be lonely because the music is coming with me. It's me and the music. And I just, like, thought of it as, like, a friend who was traveling with me. And I just started looking, like, listening to the songs and thinking of it as that was my companion coming with me. And it really changed my perspective of, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going into this venue. I don't know anyone. You know, there's going to be a lot of people. I don't, I, you know, just the anxiety behind being in a very unfamiliar space. And thinking to myself, like, you know what? I have my music. I have my friends with me. They're in my bag. I have my friends. We're all we're all here. So oh. <laughs> just like absolutely beaming as somebody I can totally relate to that and growing up, like music was just the most important thing in my life. So whenever I hear somebody just really connected to it, it's just like, Ah, yes. <laughs> this is it. Um, that's amazing. Absolutely. And also, I feel like this is a really good time for us to go back in, within, you know, and to think about our past. You know, there's a lot of people who mm -hmm. taught me so many amazing things about music, about production, and I've been thinking lately I want to call them and tell them thank you. You know, when I first started making music and um, getting into the whole electronic music scene in New York, you know, I was DJing a lot with Alexander Technique. And we were throwing parties with Junior Sanchez, and we had this party at Mr. Black, you know, called DJs Are Not Rock Stars. And we had people like Tommy Sunshine, and we had um, just a lot of really cool, uh, like, guests, you know, Felix the House Cat. And then, you know, I, I got to remix Todd Perry. And it's just, it's such, cool. like, if I just think back on my career, all of these people and all of my DJ brothers, who really helped me throughout the years and taught me the ways of music production and DJing and just how I love, oh, and, and, and DJ Pierre, like I got to work with DJ Pierre and I had a track come out on his label, um, Afro Acid, and, you know, with some remixes from some amazing people like DJ Bune and um, uh, Rick Trainer in LA and just, man, if I just sit back and I just think about all the music and all of the people, you know, that I've worked with, just to call them up and say, hey, I just wanted you to know, you know, that you're, that you, you really touched me, that you really, you know, I appreciate you and I thank you for, you know, all the time that <laughs> you showed me how to um, do that in Ableton or that, you know, I was having a rough time. Um, mm -hmm. with a gig or with a promoter and you gave me great advice or like just, you know, you get, I remember Arthur Baker, he gave me my first uh, DJ gig in New York at a party called mm -hmm. Return to New York, Return to New York um, Fashion Week Extravaganza. That was my very first kind of electronic music gig because in New York I was DJing a lot of models and bottles parties and it was great. Like I, I started off like at Lot 61 and uh, Bungalow 8 and like all these kind of very exclusive clubs but my heart was um, in electronic music I wanted to go back to my roots so you know mm. Arthur Baker gave me that first gig and it was like there was so many legends on that lineup like Joey Beltram you know and it's just it's just I guess like right now for me like I just want to encourage all of us to kind of whatever it is that you do creatively or you know, whatever it is in your life, especially the music world, like just to think back on all those people who have trudged that road with you. You know, the music industry is definitely a hard industry in a lot of perspectives. There's definitely high highs, but there are low lows, you know. Um, my violin partner, Brittany Cotto, she does all the um, contract work for Kygo, you know, and she's, they were mm -hmm. going to do like a 50 
a 50 person orchestra at ultra and now it's you know canceled so i mean this is that's a rare <laughs> instance but definitely that's you know you can imagine in the music industry there's high highs and low lows so for me you know i'm just getting emotional thinking about it all the people who have um you know walked this have been on this road with me and like me with them for the music industry because music is something that sometimes it's rewarding and sometimes not so rewarding but we need it as a, as a whole as a society as a community we need music i mean it's more important than ever because right now you know we're we're all isolated in a way that we can connect mm-hmm. is through music definitely wow i'm just like totally electrified listening to you i definitely get like how emotional it is and how thankful you are for these people and what a community it is and just yeah what it means to you i'm so thankful to be able to share that with the people listening tonight so i really thank you again for being with us and for being you and sharing all this it's great (laughs) (laughs) thank you yeah i really hope that you know whoever gets to listen to this that they have you know they they um gain some inspiration and um, I'm going to give you some references. Hopefully you can put them in the links and the, you know, for the audio that people can go to if they need to, you know, find music cares or if they need to, you know, find a group of women like society. It's the women's group online. I mean, there's so many, there's so many amazing uh, mixes and streams coming out. Um, so, yeah, like, let's all just stay connected and get together, you know, get through this together. You know, we don't have to be isolated, maybe physically, but not spiritually. So, I mean, and for me, music, I'm not religious, but, um, you know, it's like, it's like the song, like the house song, like the Eddie Amador song, like, you know, music is a spiritual thing. You know, it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's a soul thing, but definitely I'm spiritual. And I always say, you know, music is spiritual, not religious. So let's, you know, be connected in spirit and get through this together. So great. I'm so excited to share those resources with everyone. And I'm really excited to hear your set. So it sounds incredible. Thank you again. Um, I hope yeah. that your yeah. thing goes Jordan. well. We can't wait to hear this <laughs> with <you>, Sarah. <laughs> Have a beautiful day, and um, I'm just sending out love and light and music to everybody on the interweb. We can get through this together, guys. This is this is this is the beginning of something new. Yay! Thank you again for asking me to come on. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. (laughs) You too. Okay. Bye for now.
Thank all of our listeners tonight for tuning in to Transform Talk Radio on TKK Radio. And you can hear us here every Tuesday at 10 p.m. where we talk with artists about the causes that matter most to them. And we hope that you stay safe during this quarantine season. If you need to get connected, definitely reach out to us on Instagram and we'll have some resources for you there. A variety of resources from funding to emotional support to workouts as all of the gyms and bars and everything are closed around Los Angeles right now. Um, And I'm sure that that's going to be a little widespread for a moment. So let's get through this all together. As Katie Ocho said, thank you so much again, Katie, for being on the show this evening. And um, we hope that you all have a wonderful evening. And we'll see you here next Tuesday on Transform Talk Radio.